and welcome back to my channel. Now in the last episode, I was talking all about newborn and new baby sleep patterns. In this episode, I'm going to help you as a new parent with the coping strategies that you can use to help you with your sleep when you're dealing with the disturbed nights that you get with a new baby. So stick around, I have some great tips for you to help you through this phase. first thing that I want you to take on board is that rest is better than nothing. Now I know people say, oh sleep when the baby sleeps and they do sleep a lot, they, you know they're going to sleep quite regularly, they're awake for 45 minutes and they're off to sleep again. You would think that means you can get 14 to 17 hours a day like them, right? No, of course not. Because first of all, we can't just switch off and fall asleep instantly the second they do. And second of all, we do have other things to do. We have bottles to clean, we have nappies to organize, we have grocery shopping, probably online, to do. There are so many things that we still do need to do. And um, it's just not as simple as going to sleep when the baby sleeps. Now, if you can, great. If you can take a nap, do it. But don't put that pressure on yourself if you're feeling like, oh, I just can't take a rest. And if baby's asleep and you can just sit back and put your feet up, literally put your feet up and relax. Close your eyes if you can, listen to a podcast, just relax. If you can relax, you are going to be doing yourself a lot more good than you realize. But if you're running around, putting laundry on and cleaning the house and doing things that probably could wait, then you're not getting that rest. So rest is better than nothing if you can't get those naps and sleep when the baby sleeps. My second tip for you for coping, if you can, obviously this is very difficult if you are a single parent, but if you have a partner, a spouse, or even a good friend that can come and help you out for a few days or family member, see if there is a way of taking some turns in the night. I really like the idea of the two nights on, two nights off night shift. Um, which is great if there are two parents in the family because uh, you basically have two full nights to rest and know that I'm not getting up to baby tonight or the next night, you've got two full nights and it's so powerful in how it helps your body to replenish, gives you the rest you need and then gives you the energy to do your two nights on. And you could do one night on, one night off, but it's not quite the same effect. It's, it's easier to keep going for two nights and then have two full nights off. So two nights on, two nights off if you can. Breastfeeding mums might be saying, but I have to do all the night wakings because I'm breastfeeding. Not necessarily. If you express and get your baby used to having breast milk from a bottle, some of the time it will open up huge amounts of flexibility for your family. Now I know there can be challenges with that and it's not for everyone, but if it's an option, why not take it? And especially if you are, you know, two working parents or, you know, you can share the load in that way. Another challenge people come up with is, well, yes, but I'm breastfeeding and I'm on maternity leave and my husband has to work. So I have to do all the nights because he's working. Well, is that entirely true? And is that really fair? Because I understand if your partner's working and, and there are certain jobs where perhaps that is the case and that's essential and they absolutely you know have got to get all that sleep but you're working too during the day you looking after a newborn baby is as demanding as a desk job easily if not more like come on let's see if we can weigh this up here you're both working you're just doing different things some might say that going to work is a rest <laughs> from the busyness of looking after a new baby so i still think that there's room for sharing sharing the load it's unique to every family dynamic. So have that conversation and see what you can work out. The next tip I have for you is to accept help. Accept help because, especially as a first time mum, I felt like this, I'm sure we all do. You almost feel like, oh no, my baby, my baby, I'm, I'm doing it, I'm doing everything. <laughs> and you know, the family members might come along, and, oh, let me do this, let me do this. And you think, no, I'm precious about it. And, or you just don't, maybe you just feel too proud um, to accept the help just let, let get over it <laughs> and accept the help. But you can accept the help, but you can channel it to the things that you really need the help with. So instead of, oh, let me take the baby off your hands, you might go, no, 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 actually I'm okay with the baby, but you could definitely cook us a meal. Or 
I'd be really grateful if you'd sort that laundry, that pile of laundry out and fold the things or, you know, so perhaps if somebody is really truly willing to help, they could help with the less attractive jobs and not take all the glory of the new baby, perhaps. So have a think about what it is you would really like that help with and accept help if it's offered. And my other massive tip for you as a new parent, especially as a first time parent, is not to plan too much. It's really easy to get swept away by the idea of all these lovely baby groups and mums groups and going along to all these things. And it's really good for you to do that. Definitely, it's good to get out. It's good to be sociable. It's good to talk to other mums that are in your situation. It is healthy to do that for sure. But don't overload your diary so that you feel like you're back to back with this class and then this group and then this thing. Sometimes you just won't feel like it and you don't need that pressure. You know, maybe just have one thing a day. Each day there's one thing you do. It might be just go for a walk with a friend or it might be a group. But if you pile too many things in, you just create an unnecessary pressure on yourself. I used to have this thing because I had my two quite close in age. So I had two little ones to juggle for a few years. And I used to kind of have this thing where people would ask me to, to come to something and I'd go, I'll, I'll do my best. Or I don't, please don't like, please don't count on me <laughs> to be there. If I can, if the stars align, I would love to. Um, if it was a thing where I need to know, then I would just say I'd politely decline because I didn't want the pressure of having to be at that place at that time. Because when you're juggling two little ones, you've got, you know, an older baby, almost toddler, um, just about to go out the door and then a baby and then you get to the door and you've got all the stuff and then there's a nappy explosion and you're like, well, that's another half an hour. <laughs> Shut the door, take all the coats off <laughs> and start again. So. I didn't like that stress or pressure of I must be there at that time. So I didn't put that on myself too much. I learned that the hard way, <laughs> but once I learned that, it was a really valuable thing. So I passed it on to you. Don't plan too much and don't put too much pressure on yourself to be everywhere. Finally, I wanted to say to you that this time will soon pass. And so where as a new parent and you, you know, you're not getting enough sleep and everything feels like a bit of a blur. And sometimes you'll have days where you just think, I don't know how I'm gonna manage this. Or you just think, how can I operate? I have on no sleep. Like I, you, you just feel, you, you feel for a moment like this is my life now and you're not sure if you're okay with it. Well, let me just reassure you that this will pass like that. When you're in it, it feels like this is your life. It's weeks, it's literally weeks and you can be on the other side. And if you stay tuned to my channel and you follow through on the tips and things that I share with you, because coming up in the next episode, I'm gonna be talking all about how to help your new baby to very gently and gradually practice little strategies that will help them to be capable of the best sleep they can. So we're not trying to you know, get them to sleep through the night before they're ready, but we're, we want to get the best possible sleep from them and get them sleeping at their best. And I'm gonna share strategies on how you can do that. And if you follow these things, your little one will be sleeping to a better level sooner than if you just kind of leave things to chance. Um, so let's get your healthy sleep back as soon as possible. Let's get your baby's healthy sleep set up really well right from the start. So stick around with me for that next episode. I will see you there. Thanks so much for watching. If you've liked anything about this episode, then please leave a comment below and hit subscribe for more episodes like this. If any of your friends would benefit from seeing this video, then please do share it with them using the hashtag the sleep nanny. And we look forward to seeing you again real soon.